Glory to the Most High God. Be greeted all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are all welcome uh, in this service. Uh, as we have already know that we are in his presence. His presence is here with us. You may not see him, but he is here with us. He said in his word that he will be in our midst. He is here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, in this world where we are, maybe even in our country, when we live, sometimes uh, we are ruled or we are under uh, the government, under the politicians. Hallelujah. The politicians, they have uh, this behavior. All of them, not maybe a certain party or other parties, but all of them, they have this uh, behavior. The behavior of promising. Hallelujah. If you are a voter, you will understand what I am saying. They, they keep on promising. Sometimes when they need your vote, they will come and converse. They will speak so many things. They will promise us so many things. Hallelujah. It is the nature. It is the behavior of the politics. Hallelujah. Of the politicians. Hallelujah. All of them, when they need uh, you to vote, they will promise you so many things. And it is becoming also the behavior of us as children of God, the behavior of everybody in the country. is that we are adopting that behavior. Hallelujah. We are all promising. People promise every day. The politicians promise every day. Hallelujah. But what they promise, they don't fulfill. Hallelujah. Most of us, the community are crying. They are expecting and crying at the same time. Crying and expecting for what they were promised. Hallelujah. But they are not getting it. What I understand is it is because they are the politicians. It is their behavior. Hallelujah. Just as like us human beings, we have the tendency of promising. But the word of God says we must not just uh, put a vow. We must not do vows. Hallelujah. Because God knows us as his children. He knows that we rush to say things. Some of the things that we say, it end up being cases in our lives. Hallelujah. Even the politicians, what they promised us, it ended up, some of them ended up being cases to them. Because they promise, but they never fulfill their promises. Hallelujah. Let us go to the word of God in Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 7. Genesis chapter 12, 1 to 7 in NIV, it says, The Lord had said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and, I'll, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all people on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham went as the Lord had told him. And Lord, Lord went, with, went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife, Sarai, his nephew, Lord, and all the possession they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moreh at Seshem, at the time of Canaanites where were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. Hallelujah. Where we just read, we are hearing God uh, making a promise to Abraham. Hallelujah. We are hearing God speaking to Abraham. He was commanding him. He was ordering him. 
to leave his father's country, to go to the country that he will give unto him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Today we are going to talk under the topic that says, believe the promises of God. Hallelujah. The Bible is a manual. When we are born again as children of God, the Bible says we are the new creation. Hallelujah. Meaning that we are like a newborn. We are like a, a new thing. I want to thank God. One day some of the, uh, my fellow servants of God, children of God, they bought me uh, some appliances. I thank God for them. God bless you. Uh, when I want to use those appliances, I open the boxes. Inside the boxes, I found that there was a book. And that book is called a manual. It's something that before I use that appliance, I must read the manual and understand how that appliance works. Hallelujah. Meaning that I must go through that manual before using the appliance. Hallelujah. We are here. We are born again. We are the children of God. We are new in the kingdom of God. We accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. There are rules in the kingdom of God. There are commandments, commandments in the word of God. There are things that we must follow as children of God. Hallelujah. I want you to understand what is a promise? A promise is a contract. A promise is a vow. It's a pledge. Some of us were taking the pledge card, meaning that we have taken the contract. It's a declaration, an assurance. A promise is something that can be written or something that can be spoken by your mouth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And in this world, we speak, we promise. Sometimes we write down our promises. Sometimes we write down our contracts. We write down our vows. But as human beings, it's easy to break those vows. Hallelujah. It's easy to break the vows. And it is hard to keep them. That's why many of us, we go and sign. Within few hours or within few years, we go and we, we, we no longer want what we have signed. Hallelujah. It is us. It is our behavior as human beings. Here in the word of God, we are hearing about Abraham. God says, Abraham, I want you to go. You must go out of this country, the country of your fathers, the country of your forefathers. I want you to go to the country of Canaan. I want to bless you there. God is promising Abraham. But he says, Abraham, first, before I bless you, take your things. Go out of this country and go to the country that I will, the land that I will give unto you. Hallelujah. There I will bless you. I will make you a great nation. Hallelujah. You know, there are different types of promises. Let me say there are two types of promises. There is a conditional promise. And there is an, an unconditional promise. Here, the promise that God gave to Abraham, it is a conditional promise. God is saying to Abraham, if you can leave this country, if you can leave the country of your father and go to the country that I want you to be, there I will bless you. Praise the Lord. As children of God, we are living and we must follow the manual, which is the word of God. Most of us, when we read the word of God, we meet, we meet promises of God. We meet the promises of, the, of, the, of God in the word of God. Sometimes we underline them when we read. We underline the promises that we find in the word of God. Let, me, let us speak about the, con, the conditional. 
When you read the word of God, when you read the promises of God, you must understand that they are the conditional and unconditional promises. Many of us, we are here and we are saying God is not answering me. But I am praying every day. Did you read your word well? Did you read the Bible well? There are promises that are conditional. You will get what you want if you do this. Many of us, we disobey the word of God. We disobey our, the servants of God. We disobey our leaders and we expect the promises of God. There are conditions. If you want to receive from God, there are also conditions. You cannot just come and you are not born again and say, I want to claim the, the promises of God. First, you must believe in him. Then you will be able to claim the promises of God. You cannot come to my house and say, I want this. You must first prove that you are my child. You must not just come to benefit from me without proof. There are conditions in the promises of God. Yes, the Bible says his promises are yes and amen. But it, not, it is not for everyone. Praise the Lord. He said to Abraham, if you can go out of this country, I will bless you. I will make you a great nation. Sometimes you need to get out of something. You need to leave where you are and go somewhere so that God can talk to you. So that God can give you his promises. Hallelujah. Abraham was comfortable. There is nobody who can say I was not comfortable with my parents. He was comfortable with his parents. He was getting whatever he wanted from the parents. But there was a time where God wanted him alone, not with the parents. If you can continue reading the word of God, the Bible says he went, he took his nephew, Lot. But because God did not want him with Lot, that's why they fought with Lot. And Lot has to separate with him. Sometimes God wants you and he wants you alone for you to receive what he promised you. Hallelujah. Firstly, believe that what he says he will do, he will do. Many of us, we are praying every day, but we don't believe what he, we are reading. We don't believe. If I can say that the, the promises of God are yes and amen, you are just hearing me and go and say it, but you don't believe in it. Believe in the promises of God. We are here. We are in number. But the promises of God are not the same. When he called me, you were not there. And when he called you, I was not there. God says something to you. Hallelujah. Do you believe the promises of God? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You must believe the promises of God. God signed a contract with you. There is a contract that God signed with you. The same way as he signed a contract with Abraham. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We must understand the, the promises of God. We must believe the promises of God. God promises he promises Abraham so many things. But he was not going to do or he was not going to receive his promises unless he moves out. Sometimes when we are in troubles, sometimes when we face challenges, we are surprised. Let me tell you that God is not surprised. You cannot surprise God. What is going on in your life, he already knew it. What is happening in your life? He already knew it. So don't expect God to be surprised by what you are going through. Don't expect him to be surprised by what, by what you are going through. That's why he said in his way that when you go through challenges, I will be with you. When you go through the waters, I will be with you. 
The only problem that we have is that we fear witches and wizards and forget the promises of God. We fear Sangomas and forget the promises of God. But we read the word of God every day. Remember the promises of God in that situation. Remember what God has said to you in that situation. Read the word and understand it. Hallelujah. My Bible says, God says in my Bible, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I know that challenges will come. I know that situation will come. But I also know that he said he will never leave me nor forsake me. And I don't just take anything from anyone. I take ev everything that comes from the word of God. So I, I am telling you now, or I am asking you now to do the same. Believe God, not human being. I can promise you today and die tomorrow. Hallelujah. And my promises will not yet be fulfilled. I can promise you something and change tomorrow. I am a human being. I said as human being, we have attitude. We have behavior. That's how we are created. So if you put your trust in me, I can change. I can disappoint you tomorrow. Hallelujah. I want you to believe in God. Believe in his promises. What he said, he will fulfill. Hallelujah. He promises Abraham the inheritance. He said, your offspring will inherit the land. The promises that God promised Abraham, it was not just for him only. It was for the, all of us as the children of God. That's why we clap hands and say the blessing of Abraham are ours. Because we read the word of God. We believe the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is good. He is not a man that he should lie. What he says he will do, he will do. It does not matter how long it takes. The only problem, we want our will, what my wish to be above the will of God. Yes, you are a human being. You wish to have this and that. But God's delay is not his denial. He is waiting for the right time. Why can't you wait for the promises of God? Why can't you believe that what he said he will do, he will do? Hallelujah. We trust, we believe in what we see more than that, that we cannot see. God is a spirit. God is spirit. And he wants to communicate with us in the spirit. Believe what you are not seeing. Then it shall come to the physical. Praise the Lord. Abraham, he did not know the land where he was going. But he believed that if God says so, he will make it. He will do it. We cannot wait. I am 30 years. I am 35. I'm not married. Why? Why is this? We start to curse God because we want our wish to be above his will. Believe the promises of God. Trust him that he will do it. Believe that he will do it. Hallelujah. Praise him. Praise God. God influenced Abraham. He influenced him that I will make you, I will make you, I will make your name great. We are reading about him today. We know about him. His name is all over the world. What he promised, he fulfilled. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. You cannot operate in the kingdom of God without God's manual. If you want to operate in the kingdom of God without God's manual, you want magic and there is no magic in the kingdom of God. There is no magic in the kingdom of God. You must read your manual well. Then you will operate well and you will understand how God works. I say I said there is a conditional promises. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray 
if my people who are called by my name, there is an if there. So there are conditions. Sometimes when you are not receiving what you want, look at the promise that you read. You must do something first, then God will do his part. Hallelujah. If you say, if God says, you must first be born again so that you will be able to claim the promises, to claim his promises, then go and be born again. Start by accepting Jesus Christ, then you will be able to claim his promises. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You want to keep your hair, the, the man-made spirit hair, but you want the promises of God. You want to shave your hair, but you want the promises of God. Why are you wasting the time of the servants of God praying for you, whereas you are not yet ready to receive what you want? You come running. Hey, I have this challenge. But you are refusing with your demons. You want to to hold on to your demons and you also want to hold on to the promises of God. It does not work like that. There are conditions in the promises of God. It's either you hold on to the other and leave the other. You cannot hold both of them. You cannot serve God and money. You cannot serve Jehovah and Baal at the same time. It's either you choose Baal or you choose Jehovah. Believe in the promises of God and obey his commandments. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You don't sleep at night. You don't sleep at night. You are holding on to the things of the Sangomas. But at the same time you want to believe in the promises of God. My God says, I am a jealous God. And I will never share my glory with anyone. Hallelujah. You will not know who saves you if you are holding on to the things of the Sangomas and by the other side you are claiming the promises of God. If you are healed, who are you going say to say he, he healed you? You don't know. You are also confused. Because at the same time, you are drinking something. At the same time, you come for the laying of hands. It means that you don't believe in the promises of God. You have fear. To live what you were doing. Hallelujah. You cannot claim the promises of God. If you are not in his kingdom. The Bible says. If you believe. Keep my commandment. How do you want. To believe and not keep his commandment. Jesus. If Jesus Christ says. Live this. You must live it. That means that you are. Keeping his commandment. If you love me, you will keep my commandment. But we are disobeying. We are disobedience to God. But at the other side, we are ready to receive. Let us not fool ourselves, children of God. God cannot be fooled. God cannot be mocked. He wants us pure. He wants us to believe him. I said, God's delay is not his denial. He can see that you are not ready. He can see that what you want, you only want it with your mouth, but the heart is not yet ready. He will never fail you. Just wait upon him, believing. He promised Abraham that I will give you a son. Isaac, Abraham believed that indeed God will give me a son. God's time is the best. I say God's time is the best. Stop pushing God because you are in hurry. Stop pushing God because you are in hurry. Wait upon him. If he said something to you, believe that he will do it in his own time. Hallelujah. He promised us that by his stripes we are healed. But because the devil is whispering, you are sick, 
You don't want to believe what God is saying. We, you want to believe what the devil is saying. Believe the word of God. If he said, he will heal you. If he said, by my stripes you are healed, receive it just like that. Don't concentrate on the pain. Don't listen to the demons. Most of the time, when we pray for the people and the demon manifest, people run. They want to hear what the devil has done to me. Hey, what, 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 is the, what the devil has done to me? And you believe. And you when you go home, you no longer sleep. You want to sleep opening your eyes because you want to see that witch. But the Bible says you are more than a conqueror. Yes, witches and wizards are there, but you are more than them. The power of God is more than witches. Go and rest. Go and sleep. Hallelujah. Believe what God says. Believe the word of God. You are afraid to throw away the things of the Sangoma because they promise you that if you throw them, you will die. Now you are here today. You want to claim the promises of God. Darkness and light, they don't mix. Darkness and light does not mix. If you want to save Baal, go and save him. And if you want to serve Jehovah, come and serve him. Believe that he will do it for you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is not a man that he can lie. He does not lie. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. He also promised us. And these promises, they are unconditional. If you are here and you are born again, there are promises that are unconditional. Whether you believe it or not, God says, I will do it. If he says, I will be here with you, whether you like it or not, he will be there with you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In the book of Isaiah 53, if you can start from verse 1, he was, the, the Bible was speaking about Jesus Christ. He promised that he will bring Jesus Christ for us to be washed, to be cleansed, to receive salvation. And he fulfilled his promises. Whether they believed it or not, it happened. So there are things that will happen whether you believe it or not. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If he says, I will deliver you, believe it or not, he will deliver you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This God loves us so much. And sometimes we, dis we disappoint him because of our behavior. Yes, I said he he your situation does not surprise him. He knows you don't have food. He knows that you are not waking. He is not surprised. For you, he only wants you to trust him. He only wants you to believe in him. Hallelujah. These are the unconditional promises. Just be available for him. He wants you to be available for him. He wants you to be ready for him. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Let us go to the word of God. In Matthew 18, verse 18 and 19. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18 and 19. In NNV it says, Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be found in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What I'm going to speak about this verse, maybe you won't, you won't like it because it's something that I observed. It says where two or three are gathered in my name. 
I will be in their midst. And many of us, we claim this promise. Hallelujah. I said God is a spirit. And he only communicates with us in our spirit. Many of us, we go to him. We want to bind him and say, God, you said where three or more are gathered, I will be with you. But we know very well that we are not in one accord. Hallelujah. God is not a fool. You cannot mock God. Don't claim the promises. And don't claim these promises knowing very well that you are not united. It says where two or three are gathered in my name. Meaning that they are united. Meaning that they are one. They are gathered in my name. They are united. They are in one accord. Then I will be in their midst. But we want him. Lord, I am praying. You said when we went two or three are gathered in your name, you will be with us. But you know that you are not talking to your friend. You know that you are not talking to somebody. But you are gathered with that somebody. Are you going to receive what God promised? Is God a man that he should lie? Let us not fool one another. We can fool ourselves, but not God. Let us be in one accord so that we will be able to claim the promises of God. Let us love one another. Let us be one so that we will be able to claim the promises of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Believe in the promises of God and obey his commandments. Obey his commandments. Do your part and God will do his part. Hallelujah. As children at home, we have parents. Sometimes parents do punish us if we are not obeying them. Hallelujah. Parents do punish us if we are not obeying them. Just let the same, that just, it is the same in the kingdom of God. If you want something from God, obey him. He said, where two or three are gathered, in my name, I will be in their midst. So it means that let us be one. If you are in the presence of God, you are gathering and you are not in one accord. Jesus said in his word that me and the Father, we are one. And he expects us to be the same. Let us be one. We cannot be joined to him if we are, got, we are scattered. Let us claim these promises knowing that we are in one accord. Knowing that we are united. Hallelujah. Some of us, we are delaying God's promises in our lives. Hallelujah. Because when you are told the commandments by your leaders, you feel like I, I will be respecting the, my leaders. And you are fooling yourself. If God says go and lead these people, he, he is there. He is the one who is in that leader. So if you disobey the leader, you are disobeying God. And don't expect to receive the promises. The promises of God if you dis disobey him. Hallelujah. Let us not delay our promises by our attitude. You are suffering, but you don't want to change. You want a job, but you don't want to change. You are disobedient. You are disobedient. Let us not fool ourselves. Let us not waste our time. If you are not ready to be a Christian, why can't you sit down at home? Because there are rules everywhere in my home. There are rules. No child of mine can come back after 5 o'clock in the evening. So even in the kingdom of God, there are rules. So why can't you, why don't you want to follow the rules, but you want the promises of God? Hallelujah.
praise the Lord. God is good and he is always faithful to us. But we are refusing. We are refusing his promises and we go and blaspheme the name of God. We say, we say I, I've go, I went to many churches, but my situation is still the same. Hallelujah. Churches cannot change you. You must change your attitude first. Then you, God will, you will claim the promises of God. There is no change. There is no church. There is no man of God that can change you. Change yourself first. And allow yourself to claim the promises of God. Then you will be able to claim the promises of God. Children of God, let us come to God with our hearts ready to accept whatever he says. His will is not our will. His plans are not our plans. Yes, you are a human being, but most of the time you plan before asking God, what do you want God to do? If you go and do things by yourselves, what do you expect God to do? If it is not God's will for you to do that, it is not going to pass. It is not going to be successful. Let us stop wasting our time. Let us inquire. Go and ask God, God, can I do this? Then you will receive. But if we start doing our things, we no longer believe in him. And if God says no, we cannot take it. God, if you are saying no, I'm leaving the church. Who are we? Are we more than God? Believe the promises of God. Believe that what he says, he will do, he will do. Hallelujah. Let us not try to be above him. Let us obey him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We, we choose the scriptures that will fit our needs and we will stand up and claim them. We choose the scriptures. We don't want to read the scriptures that will rebuke us. We want the scriptures that will say how you will receive this, but the conditions, we don't look at them. Why? Why are we wasting our time? Why are we wasting our time? You are here today. You want to claim the promise of God. Let me tell you. Let me give you an advice. Change your attitude towards God. You can have a bad attitude towards me. But when you go to God, leave that attitude. Hallelujah. Leave that attitude. Go to God with all your heart, with all humbleness. Believe in him. We speak things. We pray to God with our mouth. But in the heart it's not there. We pray to God with our mouth. But in the heart it's not there. You don't believe it. Come to God. Just as you are. Leave the attitude back. Don't come to God with the attitude. You know, Abraham, he humbled himself. Even when God says, Abraham, go and sacrifice the son. Go and sacrifice Isaac. He humbled himself. He never questioned God. Tina, we are full of our mouth. Ah, oh God, if you don't do this, how, how can you give me the son? And you said I must go and kill him. We ask God so many questions. Abraham did not ask God, why are you giving me a child and then you say I must go and kill him? Many of us, we are facing challenges at our workplace. God says, yes, it is your job. But now you are facing challenges and you go back to God. Why God I, am I facing so many challenges? Why people don't like me? Hey, why are they persecuting me? We ask so many things. Jesus Christ was, he was persecuted in this world. And remember God promise, promised him that go and set my children free. 
He never asked God, why are these people persecuting me? He never asked God, why am I going through these challenges? The Herod wanted to kill him, but he never asked. Even Ma Maria, uh, Mary and, and Joseph, they did not ask God. Believe him. Trust him in the midst of those challenges. If he says, you must be there, allow yourself to be there. He knows why you are there. Believe his promises. Yes, maybe you are working for 10 years and you are not promoted. You want promotion. You are not getting it. God's time is perfect. God's time is the best. Many of us, we forfeit our blessings because we are always in a hurry. We want to force God to do things. And sometimes he will feel pity for you and do it. But when you are in trouble again, you will go back and ask God, why am I facing this? Please let us stop pushing God. Let us wait as children. Let us believe in his promises. What he promised, he will fulfill. Hallelujah. He promised Abraham a son. Whether Abraham and Sarah believe it or not, he did it. Some of the promises, whether you like it or not, it shall happen. He said he is coming back. That shall happen. Whether you are ready or not, that shall happen. So if you think you are not ready for his second coming, don't think that you can, he can stop because of you. Hallelujah. Let us not fool ourselves. Let us believe in him. He said he is coming back. Whether we are ready or not, he will come back. What he promised, he will fulfill. Hallelujah.